Hey everyone, it's me, Mike Ball. Um, we're gonna take a look at this AI scheduling slash calendar tool called Reclaim. I signed up for it a couple months ago, and I, at first I was kinda like, oh, it's like Calendly or anything else. Um, I had used it to book an appointment with just a colleague to get some time to talk. Um, once I got going on a couple of the features, I was like, hey, you know, this is nice. Like functionally, it feels good. And what they do is they let you set some things into your calendar and they do some auto scheduling. So if I want to do a one-on-one -on -one with somebody and I say I want it weekly, instead of making it a standing thing at the same time, they'll find a way to make it work in your calendar. Um, if you want to leave some time to decompress after a call, you can set some rules for that. Or my favorite thing is setting, I want X hours of deep work or focus time at least a certain amount of days a week so I can get shit done. So I've been really happy with how this works. Um, I had all my calendars connected and got confused the first time I went through this. So I just disconnected one. I'm gonna see how it goes. So they have tasks in here and goals and things like that to work even workouts into it, which is a great idea because there's lots of days where I say I'm gonna get a workout in the afternoon and then I never do because I'm heads down. Um, so for habit building and kind of taking control of your day and your mental health and everything like that, I think this is a pretty cool tool that lets you kind of set it and forget it instead of having to play defensive calendar and hope that people don't book over the stuff that um, you're trying to book. So let's try to sign up with the account I just removed and see if we can get through the onboarding process. I'm gonna shrink my head down a little bit. Here we go. All right. Let's see what it does. Connect to my work calendar. And I feel like if I started an account with it, I should also be able to connect my calendar. I know those are two different Google services, but maybe that can be a streamlined first step. I shouldn't have to reselect the same account, but I guess people are creating an account with one email and maybe using a different calendar. I probably wouldn't sacrifice the extra step for that. All right. I don't know why on my personal workspace, the, it won't let me set an avatar for my email account and then on the admin when I set it, it's all weird. So it squashes me, that's why it looks weird. Um, personal use for work. Ooh, too many questions. And I only get to answer one. So defend time for heads down work. I don't know what optimize my meetings means. Um, probably optimize like when my meetings are scheduled or the time in between them or whatever but let's just go with these two for now set up some habits status reports print planning so these are I like how these are relevant to products um, I said that I'm a product person so they know like hey retros backlogs print planning um, and they even know the normal cadences like every other week So let's go with, let's say I want lunch. Not that I always take lunch. Um, I do my morning catch up early. Let's say I want afternoon catch up time, customer feedback. I probably want more than that, but let's just pick a few to start. And we could skip, I don't know if you saw that, we could skip through. Um, yeah, let's say decompression time. I work from home, so I don't need travel time. I'm not gonna invite my team right now, so we'll skip that. See, the interesting thing is these features are fairly beneficial for an individual from like a take control of your calendar point. I imagine with a team, it could be really, really beneficial, especially if they connect to like the shared workspace and see all the calendars and all that stuff. Um, it might be really cool for like project managers or product managers to, to use from just a scheduling meeting standpoint. I hadn't really thought about that yet because I don't do all that anymore. But so let's see, we have habits, scheduling links. Okay. Explore on your own or get started below. What's a, okay, so a concept this has been coming up a lot in design reviews for me lately is like reddish pink tends to mentally signal error or something's wrong or restricted. So this concept 
um, color scheme is kind of making me think something is wrong here, even though they're just trying to teach me conceptually how they think about time and managing things. Um, so actually priorities are new. I haven't seen that yet. Let's take a look. P4 to P1. Okay, cool. So I have to have events to put priorities around them. So this will help with the scheduling if I have competing things that there's only so much time in the day. Well, that's cool. Yeah, I don't have any events in my calendar right now. So this is probably not the best calendar to mess with. So, ooh, this is a lot, a lot of modal popping up on top of this, like, especially when it closes in between. And then in theory, it's showing you how it prioritizes tasks and how that works. So if you're gonna do a modal like this, don't close it in between. Um, Cause it kind of breaks the flow and the process of it. What if I close this? So I still have this icon thing here that I can go back to if I wanna see it. And that opened on hover and now I don't have a way to close it. Oh no, I do, it's here. Uh, yeah, I don't like that. Opening on hover is frustrating. And then we have this overlay that says resume tour and close tour, which is on top of this admin notice, which is telling me something about features with my free trial and I should purchase. So they're actually hurting themselves if anybody came in here and uh, didn't want to finish the tour because I wonder how long that sticks. Okay, so 14 days it's telling me if I go back to planner. Okay, it's gone now. It's not going to have any stats because I haven't done anything yet. So the cool things, like I said, I think are super useful if you go into habits. Let's set a high priority, solo. That's just color coding for the, I guess, how it shows up on your calendar. We're gonna say two to three hours. What does that mean? Uh, this is too many options. Personal hours, meeting hours, working hours. I guess you could theoretically go in and set like meetings can be from this time, working is from this time to this time, personal hours are from this time to this time. One off is outside of that. To me, this is too complicated. Um, so how does this work? So I want it Monday through Friday. These are my general, let's say working hours change this to eight Whoop. five times a week and it even lets you set an ideal time now let's start at 8 a.m. how aggressively should reclaim defend this habit on your calendar Let's see what it says. So this probably has more to do with reclaim booking over it versus what other people see in that priority setting they were talking about. So we'll save that, call it deep work. I'll probably have to remove this later but so then all of a sudden when I go to my calendar later so it's booking it at my ideal time because there's nothing else on there but if I were to have something else on there it would change it around smart one-on-ones I can book with a teammate I can put their email in here I can put a title in it um, I can put a doc for an agenda or however I want to use it um, 30 minutes weekly any day, any ideal time. So same kind of logic, but this will this one will actually look at their calendar, ideally if they log in and connect it, and find the right time. And then it looks like smart meetings is the same kind of thing for a whole team, recurring meetings for everybody, um, which is just kind of a time saver to not have to do like a doodle or coordinate with five different people or 10 different people all at once. 
So the way this looks, and I'm trying to remember if I can, how I can show this to you without, maybe I'll have to block some of this out or something. If you look at, let's say, I wonder what it shows on. Okay, so if you see these big chunks on here, none of these are really telling, so I can do this one. These bigger chunks that say busy, these are my two to three hour deep focus times that it just booked in between everything else that you can see. And all those other things are calls or meetings. And then you see some of these 15 minute chunks. Those are decompressed times. If you see like a 30 minute chunk followed by 15 minutes or this one followed by 15 minutes, those are decompressed times that I have set for after calls. And I'm not like super rigid about people booking over those, but most of the time by default, when they see my calendar is busy, they don't book over it. So. Um, it's been working pretty well for me. So the onboarding was pretty smooth, right? It's just connect your different things, hop in here and start learning how to use it. I would almost say if they knew how the person was going to use it or what they were trying to accomplish um, without going down the kind of traditional goals route of like, hey, why don't you why don't they detect whether I have events in my calendar or not? And then maybe based on how busy my calendar is, suggest either habits or suggest priorities. Um, they could ask a couple more questions up front during onboarding to you know, know whether one-on-ones are gonna be helpful or to know whether um, I have a problem with priorities and need to go that route. This is probably one where calendars are familiar enough with people, they can figure it out. So here's a cool view of it. Um, but there is a lot in here for jumping into a brand new product. So this is very rare of me to say, but I almost wish they would take me like, they asked me the habits I wanted to add and they kind of put them in here already. I almost wish they would have put them here and introduced me like, here's how to adjust them or here's how to work around your current schedule or hey, people really benefit from finding some focus time or deep work. Do you want to add that in there? Just suggest something else to make it immediately more actionable and beneficial and also confirm that they did something. I didn't know they did anything just because I clicked those boxes, right? Um, but you see it starts to take shape. You know, on a busier calendar, it would look different, but it'll find the time and make it work, which is awesome. So this is kind of an onboarding walkthrough. It's a very simple, short one, but also just kind of a recommendation if you're stressed, um, if you find yourself playing like defensive calendar chess, Take a look at this. There's a free version that does enough to get you going. And then it seems like there's some really cool possibilities for teams to collaborate too.